<laughs> so, I got a question. Do criminals follow laws? I uh, remember when I was a criminal, I didn't follow the rules. Isn't that the definition of a criminal? Someone that doesn't abide by laws. I'm pretty sure that's like Webster right there. Um, so, if we make a law about the guns, are the criminals going to follow it? Probably not. So, who is the law going to affect? The ones that do follow the law. So the law is being made to keep guns out of criminals' hands that don't obey the law. See what I'm saying? Marijuana is illegal, but it's everywhere. Cocaine, crack, meth, you name it. I don't even know what you kids do, do nowadays on Tide Pods, whatever you want. And I guess Tide Pods is illegal, but the rest of it illegal but do people still have it yes they do because why because they're criminals <laughs> not calling anyone that has that criminal not meaning to I guess I mean, take it how you want to just trying to get it through to people maybe I was downtown when they were having that march for guns and I'm like what do y'all not hear what you're saying it's like let's make marijuana illegal because then no one will have it it didn't work out. I think a lot more people have marijuana because it's illegal. So, hmm. so if guns become illegal, who's gonna have them? Well, the law-abiding citizens aren't gonna have them. The people that push their shopping carts back to where they go, the law-abiding citizens, they're not gonna have their guns. So who's that gonna leave with guns? The crooks in the government, which just so you know, govern is uh, to control. That's what govern means. Mint means mind. So you put that together there. Control plus mind. You see what that is. You see what they do. Do we trust them? These last two and a half years have been a little weird. certain things that people have always had their entire lives for the entire 6,000 years that this world's been around or more, however long, whatever. Uh, we've always had those. It's called the blue, cold. But they slap a new label on it. It scares everybody. <coughs> oh, I got that. The symptom is breathing. Well, I breathe. I must have COVID. said the word. Now I might not even be able to post this video, but I said the word. But let's think, guys. Come on. We gotta use, we gotta use this. What God gave us. You can't just listen, okay? It's, it's the government to control the mind. To control the mind of the citizen. To get them to be controllable. Those people want power. They're not there to help us. I mean, it's obvious. We, we can all see that. And anyone who knows the truth about things that was Republican and was all about Trump, well, God, God says in the end days what's done in the dark will be brought to light. I thought Trump was, at first I thought he was bad. Then I found out he was good. But then... I found out the truth, okay? You know, we can see, who, who shut the world down? Who made that call? And yeah, we can say that he was only the leader of the United States, but who's the leader of the world? Exactly. We follow the leader. We find someone that we like, that has something that we want, and we try to be like them. And that's what other countries did. They've seen us. We have something they want, so they try.
tried to be like us. And he did that. Straight out of that guy's mouth, he said that he's the godfather of the shot. I'm not gonna say the word. The snake bite. The poison. started showing me signs that it was going to happen a long time ago and I, and I don't know why I'm, I praise him so much for keeping me informed and so I wasn't able to be fooled but watching it happen I'm like how can anybody be fooled maybe that's one sided because I already knew that it was going to happen I don't know it just seems pretty silly to me the whole thing I mean I guess if you don't know God and you don't understand how he works and worrying about things to be a little bothersome if you if you have to, if you feel like you're the only one that's in control of you and that you have to control your life and the ones around you I can understand that that would be very stressful I lived that life for 33 years it's a stressful life one thing I found out is that I just keep I kept it was a cycle you know get better do good, mess up. Consequences. Get better, do good, mess up. Consequences. It was just, it was a cycle. Over and over and over. I, I couldn't see a way out. I gave up. I, I didn't even think that I was good enough for my daughters. I didn't think I was good enough for anybody. This world beat me down. But I allowed it. Because when, when we were made, we're like organic robots. When we were made, God has the remote control and he, and he he gave it to us and he said here do what you want with this he said it'd be best it's in your best interest to let me have that control or let me control your life because when you control your life you're gonna mess it up you're gonna lean on your own understanding you're gonna make mistakes but God made everything he made the universe he made the air the invisible air that we do not see we don't see the air but we all know it's there we feel it we see the wind we see the clouds we see stuff flying in it we know that it's there it's invisible but we know that it's there it's the same thing with god he's invisible yeah but it's so obvious that we're there i mean listen i am breathing i don't know how to breathe i don't know what i'm doing I mean, if I think about it, then I stop and think, and I'm like, <gasps> but I don't think about breathing all the time. I don't think about breathing <laughs> every day. I just said that, and now I'm thinking about it, but I don't. You don't. We don't. But we breathe. I have no clue how my heart is beating right now. I ain't got no clue how that works. Yeah, I can read a bunch of science books that tell me this and that and this and that, but still, come on, that doesn't answer how the electric charge got in there to begin with. The one that leaves our body when we die. How did that get in there? The Bible explains it. It's the only book. Look, I get it, man. I fought it for 33 years. My dad was a pastor. He left when I was 10. He just stopped seeing me. That threw me for a loop. You know, I I actually hated Jesus. I was a very troubled child. I got left with a single mother. She did the best she could. But she didn't know God either. It was, it was hard. So I couldn't understand how a, a preacher that talked about Jesus and that was so close to Jesus could, could do that. It made me feel like I also seen a lot, I, I seen some hypocrisy. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's another reason why it's not good to lie to your children. Don't tell them that Santa Claus is real. Don't tell them the tooth fairy is real because when they find out that you lied, what do you think that's going to do? <laughs> I was just joking. No, they're going to, they're not going to trust anything you say. The world tries to do that. It tries to pull the children away from the parents. And that's how they got us. They tricked us. They tricked us into lying to our kids. Oh, they need to stay children for as long as they, no, that's, yes, they are children. Yes, they are innocent. Yes, they should live their childhood. 
But what is childhood? It is to learn and to grow and to shape and form and to be what you're supposed to be. You put that on hold? Man, I didn't grow up till I was 27. Until I got in trouble constantly and then was facing some time and was like, okay, I need a change now. It's time to grow up. But it, that wouldn't have happened if I would have... Mom, you know I love you. It's just nothing to do with you. You, 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 know, you know God now, so it's all good. But I, I didn't have an example. I didn't have anything I could trust. You know, I got lied to a lot. There was, there was a big custody battle when I was a kid, and judges told my parents not to tell me the information, which is the same thing that they did with for me and my child. They did the same thing. They told me not to tell her. You know what I learned? I learned not to lie to your children. Not to lie to anybody. It's a sin to lie. You shouldn't lie to anybody. They should all be honest. All the time. It's the way to be. I'm telling you, since since I started that, since I became a man of my word, it's so much easier. I don't got to remember the lie that I told somebody. I don't got to worry about getting caught up. Just be honest. If it's a hard truth, it's a hard truth. People can deal with it. People can deal with a lot of things. Jesus is the hard truth. I used to think that I, to become a Christian, that I had to follow all of his rules. I had to be perfect to become a Christian. I didn't understand it. And I, my dad was in my life for the first 10 years of my life. Like, Why did I not know that? Maybe he doesn't know that. I don't know. But I found out, <laughs> ain't nobody perfect. The more that I read that book, the more I realize, ain't nobody good. That's why Jesus had to come down here. If I could save my own life, if I could be good if I could do those things, if I could follow those commandments that he that he gave us, the Ten Commandments, if I could do that, then he would have never had to come down here and take that sacrifice. You see, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. My job, my wages at my job is $20, and I get paid $20 for every hour I work. Okay, that, That's my wages. The wage for sin is death. So every time you sin, death is coming to you. Now, why don't we die immediately? Why don't we? It's God's mercy and God's grace. Because if he did that, nobody would make it to heaven. Because we're all flawed. Satan did. Satan came down here and tricked us, deceived us. But don't be deceived, my friends. Don't be deceived. You can't just call on Jesus in your deathbed. And you don't know when you're going to die. You know, I, I came home one time in rehab and found him, I think he was like 26 maybe at the most. Found him dead. Went to work. He was alive. I was talking to him. Came back home. He's dead from an overdose. You don't know when it's going to happen. You could live a good life and you don't know when that meteor is going to come through the house. You don't know when that truck's brakes are going to go out and you're going to get... You do not know. So don't think that you have time. I know some of these lovey-dovey preachers will tell you that you can call on Jesus on your deathbed or that one prayer that you said in the church that one time. Now you're a Christian. Oh, you believe in Jesus? Oh, you're a Christian. It's not what the Bible says. I hope I'm not the first to tell you this, but if I am, I hope that you accept it. And look for yourself. Find it out. It's not faith. Yeah, in, in a section, it says faith in Jesus alone is what saves. But you got to read the whole thing. If, if you... I can read any book and take one sentence out and make it say what I want to. But when you read the rest of it, his, his, his apostle said when he was getting ready to die, they was like, well, Father, how do, how, do we, how do we get to you? And he said, pick up your cross, follow me, follow my commandments. Pick up your cross daily. So that's how you do it. But the, Satan knows Jesus is God. He's not going to go to heaven. Don't you understand that? When, when Jesus was being tempted in, in the desert, Satan was spitting scripture at him. When you know how Jesus beat him? Scripture. That's our weapon. It's the word, the sacred word, 
S word sword. It's the double edged sword. It sticks to anybody. That's why when you talk to people about, like probably right now, it's it's cutting you. If you don't know Jesus, then this is either making you mad or it's hitting you in the right spot. This is what happened to me. I didn't believe it at all. But I, my mom was going and I wanted to you know, make her happy occasionally. So I started, I went a couple times. I really liked what it did for my daughter. So I just kept going just because of that. And I'd sit in church and be on my phone, wasn't paying attention. But every now and then, the right things would hit me. Of course, I'd walk out of there sometimes, like, who does he think he is? Blah, blah, blah. He's a, oh, he thinks he's, his, his crap don't stink. <laughs> That's not the case. If I'd have been listening the whole time, I would have understood that. I'm sure maybe some of you think that about me. I, I do not think I, anything of myself. I am a servant. I am no king. I am no boss. I am a servant of the Most High. Which is way better. Way better. I'm not in control of my life. The Lord is. That is the peace that is not of this world. Because <laughs> y'all can see. Y'all can see that this world, this world is on its way out the door. It's obvious to see. You can kid yourself. You can say, no, technology's getting more advanced, all this and that, this and that. Sorry to tell you, you weren't born to live. You were born to die. You see, if you had a bunch of speeding tickets and you went into court and the judge was like, Jay, you got $7,000 worth of speeding tickets here. You're going to go to jail. But if somebody comes in and pays that $7,000... And guess what? I'm not going to go to jail. I had to pay that. I did that. That was me. The fine had to be paid no matter what. It had to be paid with myself or the money. And I couldn't come up with the money. So someone else did it for me. That's what Jesus did. We're getting paid death, hell, eternal death. Our bodies don't die. When you die, you go to sleep. But if you don't know Jesus, you're going to wake up in hell. Jesus paid the fine in the courtroom and he got you out. But what you have to do is believe that Jesus was God, that he died and for your sins, our sins, and that God resurrected him to prove who he was, that God allowed him, God had him, do those miracles and everything. He is God. He is God's son. It's a long one, another video I might get into some other time. The way I'll just put it right now is it's like it's like a video game. I'm sure we've all played Grand Theft Auto. It's like God is the creator of Grand Theft Auto. But when and that's out he's outside of the creator of Grand Theft Auto is outside of the game. He's not in the game. But when God turns the game on and goes inside the game of Earth. The little green flannel character guy, <laughs> forgot what his name is, whatever it is in Grand Theft Auto. That was Jesus. That's Jesus. That's how that makes sense, that Jesus is God. The little dude on Grand Theft Auto in the green flannel is not me. I mean, I'm sorry. It is me. It, that's me. I'm the one with the controller. I'm the one playing that guy. That's me. And that's Jesus on earth was God in heaven. I hope that cleared that up. Anyways, where was I going? Um, uh, yeah, I forgot. But uh, listen, it's it's almost 20 minutes already. So if you have any questions, um, followers of G I'm sorry, follower of Jesus 21 at protonmail.com or you can text me anytime um, if you need, have any questions or if, if you need some prayer or you need something, need a friend whatever, I'm here
I'm a servant of the Most High. That's what I'm here for. That's what my whole life was for. I fought him for 33 years. It's a long story. I think I was getting into that, but that, that's a long story. I fought him for 33 years. But the moment that I gave up, when I realized it was just a cycle that I was just going to keep doing, I gave up. And I I wanted to end my life. And I did. Jay Hickman is gone. And who took his place is the follower of Jesus. That's my name. Follower of Jesus. That's my identity. That's what I am. I'm a follower of the Lord. I pick up my cross daily by getting down on my knees first thing and praying to the Lord. And I talk to the Lord all day long. These are blessings. This is not a burden. This is a blessing. I live paycheck to paycheck in this crazy world like today with there is no certainty but I'm not scared one bit I have no security except for the Lord he's my refuge he's the love of my life he's everything he made us we cannot ask God what he's doing do you understand that'd be like you making something out of clay and then the clay looking at you and be like, why'd you make me like that? Why'd you do that? You would look at the clay and be like, because I'm the creator. I am I made you. I can turn you into a beautiful glass that will hold my mother's ashes. Or I can turn you in an ashtray and put cigarette butts on you. Or I can turn you into a ball that I'm going to throw and bust. I can do with you what I want. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what God is. You understand that? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Lord. Don't think that this hippie Jesus that you guys have been taught, don't think that that's who he is. That's why he said, when Moses said, well, who should I tell him you are? He said, I am who I am. He didn't say, I am who you think I am. <laughs> he didn't say that. He said, I am who I am. Because he is who he is. It, it'd be like you trying to get to know me. And if you don't know me, if you're a stranger, like, well, I think Jay, he, he's good. he's a good guy. He, uh, he doesn't care if I do this. He, he doesn't care about that. He's really nice. He, he's this, he's that. But you don't know me. You don't know who I am. I am who I am. And so is he. Find him. There's a book. He left us a book. The Bible. B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Better find him. Don't get lost. Love you guys. Got any questions? Holler. Bye.